Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and peace be upon you this morning. So, in this video, we are going to learn how to configure floating static routing using Cisco Packet Tracer. As you can remember, if you've been following us keenly, you remember that we use this topology here um, to configure the normal static routing. And now we're just going to modify a few things to learn how to configure floating static routing. And before we learn that, I'll open our Google spreadsheet. I'll let you know that today we're doing number nine, part two, floating routing. So what's floating routes or floating routing? Well, floating routing is a type of static routing, but it's a st type of static routing that hurts us the backup path the backup route so whenever the primary path fails the secondary path will pick up so floating route is normally used as a backup route okay it can use to get uh, together with the static route or a dynamic routing protocols okay you can use floating route to uh, with the SPF rib EIGRP etc etc okay so um without any further ado i'll open our notepad and let you know uh the step that we're going to follow to achieve this objective uh we're just going to uh the continu continuation we're going to use the same diagram that we used in our previous video so if not to watch the video kindly do it uh, do it fast before you come to this one because you've missed a lot kindly i will leave a link on this description part of the video click on the link and watch the first video first before you come to this video okay all right so on our notepad we're being told that on the continuation part add another router as called australia between kenya and india so we have this router here okay all right so i'll just connect them very very fast save time remember always to use 2911 route okay so if you analyze this diagram clearly you can see there are two paths from kenya to india we can use a path to, through england pakistan to india and a path through australia to india directly okay so we want a scenario whereby when one path fails when this primary path fails this will be our backup floating static routing very simple very important backup routes okay backup routes okay all right so we, before we do that guys you can see we have not allocated ip addresses between the kenya router australia router and australia router and indian router so i'll do it very very fast this time so here i will say 40.40.40.0 so starting copy then here i say uh, 50 50 50 things like that okay all right so i configure ip address here i configure 40.1 here i can configure 40.2 50.1 50.2 very very simple to save time Okay, so I've configured a period as between Kenya, Australia, and India routers. So we can begin configuring forward and backward floating static routes from Kenya to India. So very, very simple. We just go to this router here. Exit. So we want our secondary path to be this one, okay? So the primary path was that one. So whenever the primary path fails, you want the secondary path to pick up. To pick up, sorry. Okay. So that's why you have to configure floating static routes following Australia path. So I just click on this router and I uh, just say uh, IP route. Then we want to go to India using the secondary path. We still write the network address of India 
dot zero with a seven mask of two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. So for a floating route, we will always use let's always use the IP address of the next op. Okay, so we use IP from when we're configuring static route here, we use IP address of this one as the uh, the next op. Okay, so gig zero zero is having 40, 40, 42. So we just say go through 40 dot 40 dot 40 dot 2 and that's all sorry sorry I've made a simple mistake this is just a normal this is just a normal static crowd okay so what I'll do I'll try to uh, undo it and write it correctly so this was incomplete so we need to make it a uh, floating route how do we make it a floating route i talk about what is called administrative distance so when by default a static route has an administrative distance distance of one so we have to make it to have higher administrative distance let's say 130 so that is now backup route this is just a normal static route but when you do it this way it becomes floating or backup route that's all then um, we go back here and write um, here now we don't write the backup because we don't have the primary so here we just write a normal static route okay you can remember on this prime on this router we had the first the first path going this way and now when we created the second path we wanted to go this way but on this one there's no need to implement floating route here so we just need to implement the normal uh, static uh, route okay okay so here we just say ip route ip route the destination is still india 1.2.168.20.0 The server mask of 255 or 255.255.0. Then we want it to go through. I want it to be forwarded through this uh, interface. The interface of gig01 is, is having a PRS of 5050.2. So we just say 50.50.50.0. Uh, and we enter. We say that on this data, we're just going to do. The normal static routing okay all right so the packet as it's here so the traffic has reached indian router okay so you can see indian LAN is directly connected to indian router so that's our target now we have to give the backward floating route how will the feedback be transmitted back so we want the feedback to be transmitted through uh, the backup or the secondary path. Remember, the first, the, um, the primary path was the, the path was this one. Okay. So whenever the feedback is going back, it will follow this one by default. So let's implement secondary path using floating routes. So we're going to use dig01 uh, and so just click on this one and uh, come to CLI and exit IP route now destination is now Kenya third mask of 255 .0. so I wanted to go through the next stop which is the appearance of this gig01 gig01 appearance is 5051 okay so 50.50.50.1 .50 .50 now this is the secondary path the secondary path is the backup and now it has it should have a, what what's called um higher administrative distance so i'll give it something like 130 and i enter exit that's all, do right. 
right. So the traffic has the feedback or the response has left this router and is now on this router. So let's tell the response to go to Kenyan router. So we go here again. Now here we just implement a normal static route the way we did. So there, there we just say um just a minute, we change this to 10 first. Okay, then it should be forwarded to the IP address of the next stop, which is X01. X01 is having 4041. Okay, all right. So I change this to 4041. 40.40.40.1. And that's all. That's all about floating static routing. Just route the path from Kenya to India. Okay. So I'm going to try to ping for I'm going to try to trace out all what's called determine the path through the packet will follow from Kenya to India. I want it to I want to know whether it will follow this way or this way. So I just go to this router here, this computer, and uh, I trust route to 2030. You can see those are the paths. So the path, so I can explain the path. This is the default gate to each the appearance of this interface. Then 1010 is the appearance of this interface. Then 2022, uh, 2022 is the appearance of this interface. Then 3032 is the appearance of this interface. And finally, the destination. All right, so let's see. Disable the primary path and test communication. Ping and this route so we're going to try to disable the, the primary path so i'm going to just going to do this i'm going to release this link and delete this link and try to and try to do what try to um test the communication again so what i'm going to do i'm going to ping ping that one so let's just give it some time it will if it will Ping. Good. So you can see our backup is working perfectly fine. You could see our primary link was down. So the backup path link has picked. Uh, has picked. So let's try to trace route again. Trace route. So you can see. So let's let's just. Uh, do it this is our the default gate to the appearance of this route okay then 4042 is the appearance of this interface then 5052 is the appearance of this interface and finally the destination okay all right so if you can just return back uh, the links very very fast the links very very fast okay and try to trace out again i want to trace out again let's just give it some time now there's changes so it has to synchronize you can see the change the paths have now changed very simple guys i believe this video has really helped now to configure floating or backup static routes using cisco packet tracer thank you so much guys when you meet next we're going to handle the last part of number nine, which is default routing. So please subscribe to this channel, like this video, share with friends, and write a comment below. Bye and see you again in the next class. Thank you.